Hey guys, Max here with another tutorial with my Jeopardy skit. So if you've been following this series, we've been going through a different, couple different clips of this skit right here, and uh, we've composited, did a little color correction, um, stuff like that. We've made a little animation for a computer, but during the skit, there's all this stuff going on. You know, we have our host. Um, right here, and then we have three con or three contestants, two humans and a robot. And at some point in time, our contestant gets upset and reveals that the judges are yes computers, which I'll play the little excerpt real quick, and we'll see what it is. Sure, this is against the rules, Taylor. Okay, okay, let's go to the judges. Judges? Yeah, it seems like everything's okay. Wait, who the hell are these judges anyway? Well, so that was it. Um, we had I had to make this little matrixy, color graded slash, laptop shot. So, really simple, very straightforward. So uh, let's get started. Um, we're gonna start off with Premiere Pro really simple um, I just sat three laptops out on a table and I did a tripod steady shot and filmed three laptops nothing too crazy so what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna make a new sequence um, 1080p at 24 frames a second let's call it matrix laptops and normally this would be in like a longer sequence skit you know all kinds of different clips and this is that one shot you need to edit but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to be editing this. So we're going to drag this clip into here. Oh, well, first, what we'll do is what we're going to, we need to scale the clip down because it's in a uh, 1080p comp and it's a 4K clip. So let's scale this down to 50%. Makes it fit. There's our three laptops. And right now, the clip is less than four seconds and we need about 10 seconds. So let's right click, um, do add frame hold. Delete the first part, delete the audio, back this up, type 10 right here to get the exact moment. We're in 10 on the composition. Drag this out to 10 seconds. So this is our three laptop shot that we need to create the matrix laptop screens. So what we're going to do is right click and replace with After Effects composition. It's going to open up After Effects for us and prompt us to save a new file. All right. Now that we've opened up with After Effects, let's go ahead and save this as something new. Let's call it Matrix VFX. And here's our laptop shot. They're steady right here. I think our timing's changed on it. It's no longer freeze frame, so we'll do it on um, time freeze frame right here works for me so this is one of our shots so we'll do a new shot we'll call it shot one and dump the footage into the folder just to stay organized now if we had more than one shot obviously this would be helpful but it's only one shot so it's not a big deal so first thing we need to do we know that the resolution of these laptop screens is around HD so we're gonna make a solid to put here so we're gonna do new solid Let's do width 1920, height by 1080, and call it screen solid one, or we'll just call it screen one. Just like that. And what we can do is actually scale it down a little bit. Perfect. Now next, what we're going to do is we are going to pre-compose this layer and call it screen one. Nice. Next, what we're going to do is go to Effects and Presets, type Corner Pin, and since the shot doesn't actually move, we can freely pin this object to the laptops. Let's change this blend mode to Classic Difference, and go ahead and grab this Corner Pin and start pinning it to the laptop corners. Now, I'm just kind of doing a best guess on where the screen would be because we know we can't actually see the screen so I'm just kind of guessing whichever one looks the best 
I feel like it would be a little closer to the edge. We scroll out. That looks pretty good. Oh, there's a logo right there. So what we're going to do is actually cover this logo up. Get rid of the Lenovo thing. Not sponsored or endorsed. <laughs> Move this one over. And this is all by eye, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because at the end of the day, we got to make three thumbs and matrix pop up. Cool. Now that we've corner pinned this screen onto this one, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our project and we're going to duplicate this composition for screen two and drag it into here. What was the scale on this one? 35%. We'll also make this one 35%. And we'll put it right on top of this screen. Then we'll duplicate this composition again and then scale it down to 35%. And the reason we're making three separate compositions is because we need to make three separate timed events. If we just duplicated this one comp and put it on these two other screens, it would happen all at the same time. And if we look in our original video, right at the point where the screens pop in, the matrix is at different times and the three thumbs pop up at different times. So that signifies there are three separate compositions. Cool. So what we'll do is we'll copy corner pin and paste it to this. Actually drop this mode down to classic difference so we can see and we'll just kind of eye it like we did before. Not a big deal. Bring it up. That looks pretty good already. Real quick. Looks practically perfect. I think the bottom right can be brought down some. And this could be brought in some. That looks correct. Also, take this corner pin, paste it onto this one. Just so we don't have to you know, drag and drop the effect. We're just copying and pasting it and move it over to this. I don't think the Lenovo screen is this big in real life. That one looks pretty good initially. Let's move this one corner up a little bit. I think those look pretty good. So we can turn the uh, classic difference back to normal on all these layers. Highlight all of them, close them down. And now we can, for screen one, we'll go to, click on screen one, go to layer, a layer style, inner glow. Then drop down the tag on inner glow, change the blim mode to normal, change the color of it to a dark gray, then change the size to, I don't know, 16 looks pretty good for this. Change the opacity down to like, you know, 42, 45, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, it'll work. Copy and paste this inner glow. Paste it on our two other screens. And we're getting there. So what we're going to do now is actually import the matrix footage. It's nothing that I created myself. It's just something I found on the internet. Downloaded it from YouTube. I can show you the specific video I downloaded it from if you'd like to see it. But, you know, this is pretty much for educational purposes, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to drag and drop the matrix video into our composition, put it into our shot one, open up screen one, and drag it down to here. So what I did was I opened up screen one from here, double click, put in the matrix footage, and we can scroll through the footage really quick to find the exact point we need where it's where the uh, all the numbers are falling down randomly. I think this is it. Looks like it. So command C, copy this layer open up screen 2, paste it in, open up screen 3, paste it in. We'll drag it differently in each screen to offset the timing. Then go back to this and boom, we are well on our way to having matrixy looking footage. So, next step, we need the thumbs up emoji. And what I did was I got on Google, I went to thumbs up emoji, PNG, 
I downloaded it right off of Google Images, and we can drag it, drop, drag and drop it right in. Persons 0106 PNG <laughs> works for me. Go to screen one, paste it in. Let's, and it's pretty much right in the middle. What we'll do is we'll type S on the keyboard, key the scale with this little hourglass, move it back, scale it down to zero. What we'll do is keyframe assistant, ease out, ease in. Let's see what this looks like. Should look pretty good. So we did a little RAM preview of this and let's see comes in just fine the thumbs up nothing too crazy then what we're gonna do is go to hue and saturation and we're gonna make it look kinda green so if we take the master hue and change it you can kinda give it a kind of a green tint bring the saturation down or up or whatever that's pretty green master lightness what we can do is actually bring the opacity down some and then command C go to screen 2 command V where it's going to come into about right here then it's command V and it's going to come into about right here so if we go back to this the first one should pop up then the next one then the next one looks pretty similar I think they were actually bigger in the old video, if we go to the Jeopardy skit, yeah, they're actually much bigger on the screen. So what we can do is go into screen three, delete these out, go back to screen one, click S for scale, and actually delete this, and we can oversize it really fast. Let's make it about this big on the screen and then right click or right click keyframe assistant ease in well command click turn it back to a normal keyframe keyframe assistant ease in and then copy this screen two we'll paste it here screen three we'll paste it here to make it come down the timeline just like that one two three all that's left now is to color grade this image. What we're going to do to do that is we're going to go to our effects and presets, type looks. I'm going to grab magic bullet looks, drop it onto here, click edit. Magic bullet looks will open up. We scroll out. What we can really do really quickly is go to warm and cool. Let's equalize the temperature really quickly. Looks a little better. Maybe brighten up the exposure a little bit. Take the contrast, bring it up. You know the matrix is very contrasty. Then what we're gonna do is bring the shadows down to a more green tone. Kind of click around right here. Then go to here, range saturation, desaturate the highlights, which kind of gives us that green matrixy look. Cool. So now, if we turn this look on and off, gives it that kind of green matrixy look just like we had before. That's pretty similar, not bad. I think my greens up here are a little different, which I kind of like more, honestly. It's not half bad. So, if we go back to Premiere, boom, there's this, looking great. 
Then as always, we can grab our PNG, copy it, paste it in. And if you're curious about this PNG, it is a black bar PNG that I created in Photoshop that is a 2.39 by 1 ratio. And yeah, really simple way to create it so you don't have to crop your footage anymore. You just have it built into here. And um, in my version of this, um, I did a lot of sound design where I downloaded a bunch of clicks and beeps. For the video, I'll let you take a listen to it really quick. It was literally, I found as many free files as I could online of different free stuff. How are these judges anyway? And a lap track, of course. So, yeah, I would go into putting all that sound in here, but it's really not hard. It's literally random clicks and beats, beeps that I just kind of spliced into the audio. Nothing too crazy. So, yeah, um, overall, that's how you do this. So, thanks, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick um, After Effects tutorial with a little bit of Premiere on how to take a shot like this and turn it into a shot like this pretty darn cool well thanks guys I'm Max and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you next time thanks for tuning in I really really appreciate it peace